In today's video, we're going to be covering nine tips for clean, safe, and efficient code in Python. And to get started, let's go ahead and create a new empty project. And the very first tip I want to go over is called type hinting. And type hinting just provides a very concrete way of understanding what our code is. So for example, if we go ahead and create a function called process text, in general, if you want to add a variable, you just add it inside there. But the major drawback with this is that it doesn't provide any string functions or any integer functions or any float functions. It doesn't provide any of that. And this is where the major benefit of using type hinting comes in. Because if we decide to add text of type string, we can now access all of those hints that come with the string. So we can go ahead and type in text.split. And we can actually go ahead and print this. And if we actually process this text that says, hello world, it's going to give us a list of these two. And it just made it so much easier because we included the type hinting. And you can do this for any type of object out there. So it can even be a list of string if that's what you want. And of course, this method is not included with that, but it will give you everything that is included with the list. Now, the second tip is extremely simple. Pretend you have a value of 10 and you want to print that value. A very easy way to do it, of course, would be to go ahead and create a formatted string like this and say that the value is the value and it will work perfectly. But personally, when it's only one value, I like to make it a bit faster. So I'll just go ahead and type in value, comma, value. And I definitely recommend this if you are printing single values. It's going to give you the same output, or actually I forgot a colon here, but otherwise it will give you the exact same output with a little bit less work. Tip number three, pretend you have some video specs and the specs are going to be 1920 by 1080 with 60 frames per second. Now, a lot of times when you use functions, they're going to return to you a tuple. And one way to retrieve the information from the tuple, of course, is to go ahead and type in height and say, we want to get the video specs at the index of zero, but that can be quite annoying if you just want to get all of them at once. So an easier way to do this is to use multiple variable assignment. So here we'd go ahead and type in width, height, and FPS, and that's going to equal the video specs. So that just deconstructs it and puts it into these three variables. And it's a lot cleaner and it's definitely a bonus if it's a one liner. And the same thing goes for if you want to assign variables in a multi-line, you just go ahead and do that and put them in order. So this will give X a one, Y a two, and Z a three. And now we can go ahead and print any of these variables that we want. If we want to print the width, it's going to print the width. We can go ahead and print the height and it's going to work exactly the same way. And the same thing goes for the other ones. So if we go ahead and print X, we're going to have X printed to the console. Now the next tip is a very light introduction to data classes. So we have to go ahead and import from data classes the data class module. And to use a data class, just go ahead and annotate data class for the class that you're creating. For example, we're going to create a class called coin and it's going to have a symbol of type string, a name of type string and a value of type float. And let's go ahead and also create a coin, which is going to equal a coin, which will be BTC for the symbol. The name is going to have Bitcoin and the value is going to be 30,000 and 10 cents. Now, when we go ahead and print this coin, we're going to get some funky text back, such as that we have this object of coin. But the benefit of using a data class is that you can go ahead and type in coin and take out the value that you want using dot notation, which saves us a lot of trouble with key errors. So if we print out the name, it's going to give us the name directly. Now I went ahead and recreated this using a dictionary. And as you can see, we have a symbol of Bitcoin, a name of Bitcoin and a value of 30,010 cents. Now to access it, you need to, of course, use the string key. And when you run this, you'll get Bitcoin, of course. But the major error with this approach is that sometimes we make errors, of course. So if we type in NMEE, -E, for example, we're going to get a key error. And it's obviously there. It's obvious that we have a name. We just have the chance now of making that fatal error. Tip number five is a very basic introduction to list comprehensions. Now it's good if you have a basic understanding of it and it's not required that you use this to use Python, but it's definitely good to know where you can use it. So for example, we have numbers, which are going to be one, two, 
three, four, five. And if we want to filter that, let's say we want to filter the even numbers, we're going to call this filtered A as the filtered list A, which is going to be a new empty list. Now, in general, you would go ahead and create a for loop for number in numbers. And if the number modulus two is equal to zero, you would go ahead and append to filtered A the number. And when you go ahead and print filtered A, you'll get two and four. But there's a much more convenient way to do this, and that is using list comprehensions. So here we're going to go ahead and create filtered B, and filtered B is going to go ahead and check for each number, and that's the number we're going to return, for the number in numbers. So just typing this, we're going to return all the numbers. So for each number in number, return number. And if we go ahead and print B, or filtered B, we're going to get all of the numbers. But of course, we also want to filter that. So to do that, we need to go ahead and provide an if statement. So if the number modulus two is equal to zero, we will return this number. And it's going to give you the exact same output, except this time it's in one line instead of having an extra five lines. And the coolest part about this is that you can even process the final product. So maybe you want to even multiply each number by two by the time you have filtered all of them. So if we run that, we're actually gonna get four and eight. So it's very powerful and it's not necessary you know much more than this. It's just good to know because a lot of future programs are going to be using it. And it's a very clean way to implement code if you have simple cases such as this one. Now, tip number six is still very relevant if you are new to Python, because in most programming languages, you need to use the AND operator to make two checks when you're performing some sort of Boolean logic. So for example, in most languages, you would check if X is more than 10 and X is less than Y, then you would do the following code. Let's say print confirmed. And this is actually not really the most impressive tip because it does give you a message that you can simplify this. And the way you simplify this is just by chaining it. So you can say that if X is more than 10 and less than Y, then you can achieve the exact same result. And here we're going to get confirmed. So side by side, it looks like this. And it's just good to know that this means exactly the same thing as this. Now for tip number seven, we have a ternary operator, which is also something you should be aware of if you are new to Python. And let's go ahead and create an example. So internet is going to equal false. And usually you can create a big if else statement and it takes several lines of code. So if internet is true, we can go ahead and say is underscore connected is going to equal connected. Else we want to do the opposite, just like that. And we can go ahead and of course print is connected. So right now we are not connected. But the problem with this approach is we've wasted four lines of code for something so simple when there's actually a very simplified ternary operator that solves this. So for example, if we go ahead and type in is connected, once again, we can say return connected. If internet is true or whatever Boolean expression is true, we're going to return connected. Else we're going to return not connected. And that's the exact same code, except this time we've simplified it to a single line and it's just as readable. Tip number eight has to do with enumerations when you are looping through a list. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and paste in a list from earlier. We have people of which are Mario, Luigi, Wario, and Toad. And for I person in enumerate the people, we're going to go ahead and print each person with a number right next to it so we can see how many people we have. So for example, we need to go ahead and print I and then I'm going to print a colon and I'm going to print the person. So when we go ahead and run this, you'll see that at the index of zero, we have Mario, Luigi, Wario, and then Toad. And to make this much more human legible, go ahead and add one so that the list will be nicely formatted. And this takes away the necessity of having to go ahead and create a variable such as i and increment it each time inside the loop. Now the final tip has to do with formatting numbers, how we can add commas, how we can add decimals, and how we can round numbers easily. So first we're going to go ahead and create a decimal of type float, which will equal 12,000 or 120,000 actually, dot one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's a very ugly number as you can see. And the first thing I want to do here is format the decimals. So we're going to create a variable called formatted decimal, of type string, 
and that's going to equal this following code. So here we need to add some curly brackets and inside we have a zero followed by a colon and dot two F, which stands for two decimal places. And then we need to go ahead and provide the format keyword and pass in a decimal. Now, when we go ahead and print this, we're going to get the formatted decimal to only 0.12. And you can do this for any number you want. Now, another way to achieve this, of course, is to go ahead and use the rounded keyword. So here we're going to go ahead and type in rounded decimal, which is going to be of type float. And that's going to equal the rounded decimal, which is going to be the decimal to two decimal places. And you can change this to four or five or whatever number you want. We'll leave it at two for now. And we'll go ahead and print that. And you'll get the same result, except this time it's going to be in a number format. Now let's pretend we want to have a comma between 120,000 because it's kind of hard to read as the numbers get bigger. So here we're going to go ahead and type in format comma, and I'm just going to abbreviate that to format com of type string, which will equal a formatted string. And inside here, all we have to do is insert the decimal followed by a colon and a comma. And as soon as we print that, we will get the formatted number with a comma. And what if you want to format both the large number and reduce the decimals? Well, there's still an answer to that, and that is using the rounded decimal inside the formatted part here instead of the original decimal. So if you go ahead and insert the rounded decimal, now when we actually print this, we'll have a perfectly formatted number. And with that being done, we've gone ahead and covered nine tips and tricks that you can use in Python as soon as you start coding again. Let me know in the comments section down below how many of these are new to you and how many of these you already knew. But with that being said, as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.